Neil, I, this is a really, uh, I, I want to take a moment and I'm going to ask us all just to give God praise. This is a very special Sunday. Do you realize right now we have, it's a miracle. We're experiencing a miracle. We have everything open at New Life except our bearing site and children's ministry. We'll talk about that in a moment. But that means we have our school wide open right now, RCS, our Maple Valley. Come on, come on. Those of you, it's... The, it's it's absolutely a miracle that, that that we're doing school and we have our our we have our Kent campus open today. Can we give a shout out to our Kent community? Right, our our Maple Valley. We have softer Sundays open. We New Life. I, I want us as a church to give God glory. He is um, really has given um, us as a church community um, wisdom, boldness, courage. And thank, and by the way, the technology, the ability, one of the things our commitment is, is to not only be open on our physical gatherings, but to do online better than ever, better than ever. Come on, all my online people out there. And so here's what's amazing to me, if I can say it like this, from a storage container, so we have two storage containers here. Those of you watching online, literally two storage containers, from these storage containers, we are able to declare to the world that Jesus is Lord. And, and, and to see what God is doing, we will write about 2020 together as a church community, the, the miraculous favor of God, the giving of the people of God, the faithfulness, new life. I just give God honor and praise. I want to say to you, Boy, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And so uh, it's just amazing, amazing just to see people come back to church. And we're just excited what he's doing. And by the way, uh, we will get our burying site open. And we will also get um, children's ministry open. We'll talk about that in a moment. So before we jump into a brand new series, how many people are ready for a brand new series? You ready? Here we go. Um, it's going to be over John. But let me just kind of give you this big day. We are, um, in a few weeks, you've all heard of Christmas in July. We're going to do Easter in October. <laughs> Easter in October, man. And we're, we are excited about this. First of all, at the essence, at the core of Christianity is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are going to celebrate and we, and by the way, I'm not sure if we're allowed to do this, but who cares? Come on, right? We're we, we going to do it. We're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, I think it's going to be amazing. And one of the things we're going to do is celebrate kids. We're going to have a gift for all kids. For all, let me see if I can get this. Well, I was going to take my jacket off, but if I take it off, the whole mic's coming off. So I'll leave it on here. But we're going to be um, giving gifts to children, having a big children's party. So we're very excited about this. And here's the deal. Back to church. How many people know we need to get back to church? Come on. Amen, pastor. Preach it, preach it, preach it. But back to church. And again, church, you know, for the digital, online, all across the world, our parking, um, in, in person. We're going to get back to church. But we're excited about that. That's like, I think, three weeks from now. Let's get ourselves ready. And let's believe that God wants to do something very special. I, I'd love to, wouldn't it be awesome if all Seattle would celebrate the resurrection of Jesus? Come on, Seattle, wake up. And so, by the way, we have other churches joining us too. Kind of a new movement. Let's celebrate the resurrection of Christ together. And I will be dressed in a tie that day. Come on, come for that reason alone. <laughs> it's right anytime I wear a tie people say you dress up nice come on well here's the deal we are jumping into a brand new series over the gospel of John over the gospel of John and today I'm giving you the big picture big picture for the next six weeks we are going to study the Bible together if you're newer to new life by the way it's so fun to meet people and connect with new life during the last six months so fun People that love new life, people that are diving in. And I say this, as I say that, that if you're newer to new life, what we do here at New Life is we preach the Bible. That's what we do. You'd be amazed how many people ask me that one question. What do you do on Sunday? I go, we preach the Bible, everybody. We believe, here's my prayer every Sunday when we come together, is that the Bible would come alive. 
I pray that if you've been in the church for 50 years or for just a few minutes, that somehow scripture would come alive in your heart. One of the phrases we use here at New Life, we preach for Monday. We're not so, we don't care so much that you're impressed on Sunday. We want you to live it out on Monday. And so we're going to jump into the book of John together for the next six weeks. And here's my challenge. Here's my challenge to every new lifer. Let's read the Bible together during these six weeks, okay? Let's jump into John. It's 21 chapters. John is one of my favorite of the gospel writers. He really shows us the story of Jesus. Well, John, packed throughout the book of John, you find theology. What you do is you see Jesus. You see how Jesus always had time for people. And one of the things when I read John, I just go, I want the church to be like that. The story of Jesus, how he would, comes up, if, if you're a religious person like Nicodemus, or a woman caught in adultery. There was something about Jesus that, that, that um, was breathtaking for the world. Matter of fact, I'm giving you the big thought, but we'll get there in a moment. The thing about Jesus is so amazing that those who were not like him, those who disagreed with him, that weren't like him, actually liked him. They actually wanted to be by him. He spoke with so much grace and such clear authority that even if you like disagreed and even if your lifestyle wasn't there, you wanted to be close to Jesus. So New Life, here's what I want us to do. I want us to jump into John together in our families, our personal devotion. I want us to light up the book of John and let's study Jesus together. How many of you are ready to study the life of Jesus? Come on. And I want us to read it. Today's the big picture of John, but I want us to go for it. I can't think of a better book as we we continue through this pandemic, as we continue through 2020, that we're going to discover a, a God a gospel message where we discovered that Jesus was full of grace and truth. And so I'm very excited about it. Let's pray and start this series. Father, thank you for new life. God, even as I stand outside and see the beauty of God's creation, Paul said in Romans that we can know the providence of God, the nature of God, just by seeing what you've created. God, thank you for this year. God, it's been a year where all of us are just standing, and at one moment where we can be paralyzed and full of fear, but God, today we come and we're full of faith. We're full of the spirit of the living God. Lord, I pray for a revival in Seattle. I pray, God, for our families. Lord, we pray right now for America God, we pray in a world full of hatred and division that we would be a church filled with the grace of God. Father, touch this time together, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When we open up 2020, which was back in January, doesn't it feel like 20 years ago? Come on, right? I preached a message uh, about the church. It was called the 2020 series. And um, I preached a message of how Jesus, the son of the living God, is full of grace and truth. And during that message, I talked about how Jesus is not like half grace, half truth, but he's full of grace and truth. And that we as a church, if we're going to be the church, we need to be a church that lives out Jesus to this world. That we are full of grace and truth at the same time. And let me tell you, New Life, as I preached that in 2020, I felt like that would be a temperature for our church for the year, but I didn't realize how true that would be. I didn't realize that in 2020, we would have to show each other grace and truth. Didn't realize in March, March 8th would be our last, quote, official Sunday until we went into the seven-month um, pandemic. I didn't realize the grace we would have to show each other during conversations over race and conversations over health issues and conversations. Let me tell you, being a pastor today, every pastor in America is struggling. 
because they find themselves, no matter what they say, they can't say it right. I didn't realize we'd have to show grace and truth as it relates to how to open and when to open and how fast and how quick. I didn't realize we had to show grace and truth when it comes to um, wearing masks and how to wear them and who should wear them. I didn't realize that. But I want to tell you, I think God set the temperature of 2020 in those few, first few weeks to prepare us. New Life, I want to tell you as your pastor, the New Life Church, God has helped us to truly live out what it means to be a full of grace and truth. And this is why I want us to come back to where that started. It started with Jesus. It started with the Gospel of John. When you study the Gospel of John, you discover Jesus walking on here on this earth. And as he lived among us, as God dwelt among us, what you discovered is that Jesus always was full of the grace of God and yet never compromised the truth of God. Always. He wasn't like 50% grace. I'll be graceful to you if I feel like it. He was always graceful. Always full of the mercy of God. Always believing for the outcast. Always there. Full of grace. And yet never compromise absolute truth. Where he says, I am the way. I am the life. And I am the truth. And I'm telling you, one of the things in church life. And we all know this. So often churches, it's like people go like this. Sometimes you have like, like an all grace church. We're full of grace. We're full of grace. We're full of grace. It doesn't matter really about biblical truth. And you like, let me tell you, in my, from my theological perspective, there's no such thing as just simply a grace truth. You have to be a grace truth church and a truth church and preach the Bible and preach grace all at the same time. You cannot go like this, well, I preach one or the other. When we discover Jesus these next six weeks, we're going to see one that was able to walk among the people full of grace and truth. One of the things as we look at John and we look at some of the key scriptures of John here this morning, you see that in the church life and when you respond to culture, there's three different ways that churches respond. One of the ways churches will respond is they'll ignore everything going on around them. And there's a lot of churches, there's even theology around this where you kind of ignore the world and we're over here, but you ignore what's happening. The other thing that many churches will do is isolate. We'll isolate ourselves. We'll pretend. We'll pretend like right now you're not in the middle of a 2020 crisis and we'll isolate. But here's what we discover through John, and I want us all to jump in together, is that Jesus, the son of the living God, God did not ignore our sin problem. God did not isolate himself. But what the Bible talks, and this is a word you don't use often, but I'm going to introduce it to you. God incarnated himself. Incarnate means become flesh. Here's what we discover about God through the Gospel of John, that God became flesh and God runs towards the mess while we want to run, run away from it. And what we discover throughout the Gospel of John is that God walks amongst us. He does not ignore. He doesn't isolate, but he incarnates. He says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to walk with you. God is going to come from heaven and dwell among us. And as we study the Gospel of John together, I want you to see this theme. It's like God going, and, and what happens in, in the Gospel of John, John blows the readers away by saying, the God that you think is distant, no, God is close. The God that you think you have to go through all these loops, all these, all these rules to get close to, no, that God became flesh. And that God dwells among us. In your life, as I think about this beautiful city of Seattle, and I realize there's people that are joining New Life all over the, all over the country and the world. We have, we have people, New Lifers everywhere, but I, I think about Seattle. I believe that God wants the church to incarnate to be Jesus to this great city called Seattle. Amen? So we're going to jump right into it, and the question we're going to answer is this over the next six weeks is, how do you do this? How do we 
how do we, as believers, as people that say we follow Jesus, how do we show, say this out loud, if you're online, kind of type it in the comments, how do we say, that, say it, grace and truth in a world full of hatred and division? How do we do that? And the only answer I have, and it's my answer all the time, is Jesus. We have to study his life, look at his life, and see how he did it. And we're going to look at that specifically in the next five weeks. We're going to look how Jesus showed grace and truth, not 50-50, but all at the same time. So let's take a look at some of the top scriptures from the book of John, some of the, what I call the anchoring scriptures of John. The first one is John 1.14. This is like the scripture of the book of John. It says that the word became flesh, that God became flesh, that God became a human. I love how some scholars put this. It's like God moved into the neighborhood. We don't, we don't work ourselves up to God. Every major religion alive today teaches that we work ourselves towards God. No, God came down from heaven and became flesh, and God made his dwelling among us. Now, I know that's hard, like, well, I've heard that before, but that's a good amen right there, everybody, right? That God made his dwelling with us. And again, the readers of John, he's writing to the Gentiles here. They're not getting it. They're going like, God came to this earth to show himself, to show his glory through the person of Jesus. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son, we have seen the glory of God. This is incredible. We see the glory of God when we see Jesus. We see now God's presence and God's power. And John says, we now have a glimpse of the glory of God because of the person of Jesus. And this Jesus is full of, come on, grace and truth. Unconditional love, grace is a word for the unmerited favor of God, forgiveness of our sins, full of grace and truth, the truth of God, Jesus is Lord, the Bible is the final authority, you don't pit these against each other, you walk in harmony with them, that Jesus is full of grace and truth. John is one of these books where we get so many of our scriptures that we talk about. John, his contribution to the Christian faith is remarkable. We find the very common scripture, that regardless if you're in church or not in church, or you, we've all seen this scripture in John 3, 16, where we see, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that God became flesh, he gave his son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. As we study the Bible together, notice the words of John, the word believe and the word life. John writes, he says, Jesus has come that we can put our trust in him. And when we put our trust in him, he gives us life. And that life to the full. New life, let me tell you. You need to get excited. We all need to get excited about the gospel of John because John comes in the scene. He says, God is dwelling among us and now we experience his glory and we experience life and we experience belief in Jesus Christ because God loves us. That God did not send his son into the world, verse 17, to condemn the world, but to save the world. And this is so contrary to world religions. So contrary, because John says, no, Jesus came to this world to save us, not to condemn us. And so many churches, when you listen to them, it's like they want to condemn everybody. Jesus came to save us, not condemn us. And as we study John, I want us to fall in love with the word of God here and see how these are scriptures are so powerful. It's in John 8 where Jesus says, and these are some of the theme scriptures throughout the book of John. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In other words, we need truth preached. 
Often churches can lean on the grace side so much that we don't realize that really, if you have all grace and no truth, you have no gospel. Come on, everybody. The gospel is this harmony of the grace of God and the truth of God walking together. And John says, Jesus, quoting Jesus, you shall know the truth. And this is why at New Life, we'll make phrases like this. The Bible is the final authority. We preach the Bible. We don't compromise. And we're clear where the Bible is clear. And it's so critical is it's truth that will set people free. But that truth without love is brutality. Truth without love is like a weapon that the church uses. And you see this beautiful harmony of God's love coming to this earth and going in grace and in truth. I'm calling humanity back to me. Not only calling, I'm dwelling among you to show you the love of God. I love what it says in John eleven twenty five, 25, where Jesus says this, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And this is why we're going to celebrate Easter together, by the way. He is alive. And here, John, he says, I'm alive. The one, who, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. In other words, I give you life. New life, our name is new life. And it's, it's really built on a theology of the gospel of John. That Jesus has come to give us new life. Not to condemn us, not to, not to just be at a distance and ignore us and isolate, but to dwell among us. And here's the good news. Jesus has called us to be that to the world. And so John, as you walk through his book, it's full of theology, full of story, full of us discovering who God is in a way where John wants his writers to believe, understand that he's come to give us life, and we need to put our faith and trust in him alone. One of the last scriptures of the book of John, it tells us what John is all about. It says, but these things are written, talking about the entire book, 21 chapters. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Come on. These things, John says, I'm writing all of it. So we can believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. I'm writing all of it so we can put our faith and trust in Jesus. I write this so you, that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. New life. As we walk through 2020, I want us to fall in love and anchor ourselves in the gospel of John. Where Jesus says, I have come that they may have life, and we are called to be that church. We are called to be that church. So how do you live with grace and truth in the middle of a world full of hatred and division? We start that next week. And I want you to literally go the next five weeks, let's be faithful to the house of God. And let's study that together. How do you show that to the Samaritan woman? How do you show that to the religious Nicodemus? How do you show that to the woman caught in adultery? How do you show that? We see it through the person of Jesus. Let me give you one last metaphor that I think is so beautiful of how to show grace and truth to people at the same time. Many of you know Pastor Kevin Gear. He's one of our teaching pastors. Pastor Kevin is from Montana. And he tells a story that when he was a kid, him and his brother were out playing around, and he fell into quicksand. And Pastor Kevin, only how he could tell the story, he's in the quicksand, and his brother is over here laughing at him. Now, I want us to think about that for a moment. Finally, the brother helps him out, and we have Pastor Kevin today. That's the, that's the, big, that's the, that's the end of the story. But Pastor Kevin tells the story in a, such a powerful way because he makes a statement that when someone is in quicksand, you don't stand back and just kind of laugh at them and tell them why they were wrong. That's not the time to give them the truth of the matter and go, here's why it's wrong. You are in quicksand, so therefore you're in your sin and you're dying. At the same time, if someone's in quicksand, you don't go, oh, everything's good, just grace, grace, and I'm actually going to jump in and I'm going to sink with you. 
You don't do that. New Life, what do you do if somebody is in quicksand? What you do is you reach out your hand like this. And you make sure your foot is anchored on something. You make sure you have an anchor point. And New Life, let me tell you, if you only do this, but you don't have this, you're in trouble because you're going to fall right in. But if I'm only anchored over here and I'm laughing as people are dying, you're in trouble. You're just anchored in something, but you're not really being Jesus. The picture of the church is this. We're anchored in truth while I'm trying to help people get out of quicksand. That's the church. Come on, that deserves a good amen. Come on, right there, a good beep. A good honk of something. That's the church. And often, the church, if you're not careful, you can really go haywire here. Instead of understanding, we are anchored in the truth of God. Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. And I'm going to reach out to people that are hurting. And I'm going to be the hands and feet of Jesus to the world. How do you live with grace and truth in a world full of hatred and division is we put on a new theology, a new theology. I'm going to be Jesus to people, and I'm going to live this out the way Jesus lived it out. And we're going to discover that together, how he lived and how the people responded to him is so breathtaking. Jesus, three years of his ministry, and he always had time for people. New life, let's discover how do we live with grace and truth in a world full of hatred and division. We're going to pray here. And what we're going to do is that we have restructured our Sunday gathering so we can really give a special time of worship at the end. And I love this worship at the end because what it does, it allows us to take the Bible from our head to the heart. It allows it to go like this, because how many of you know it's easy to know the Bible but not live it and not fill it and live it out? I'm going to ask all of us, all of us in our auditoriums, at our sites, if you're watching from home, I'm going to ask all of us to take this few moments and let's worship King Jesus together and let's allow the Bible to go from our head to our heart and ultimately live it out every day of the week. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're doing in the church. God, I pray, even now as we go into a time of worship, that God, we would declare, declare Jesus is Lord. And God, would you help us? I boldly pray for new life, that we would be like Jesus to this world. That God, we would tell a world that's full of hatred and division that Jesus is full of life. Life. And God, I pray. I pray, God, for fall 2020, it would be the most amazing fall that New Life has ever had. As we study your word and we anchor ourselves in truth and we reach out with grace, God, we would see people that are in quicksand that need a church that would be Jesus to them. So now we worship you, Lord. We give you praise. Come on, New Life. Let's worship King Jesus together.